Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixelpad tutorial where we are coding our Clash Royale-like game, right? Last class we added the life bars to the castles and today we are going to start adding our enemy. So, first thing we're going to need is a sprite for our enemy, right? So I'm going to go ahead here on the sprite section, press the plus button and here I'm going to look for an enemy, but here we already have the bat. I'm going to use the bat. We could use the blue slime as well, but for now I'm going to use the bat. So I select the bat, select asset, and I'm going to call it bat. That's my bat. Okay. Now, as we have a class unit that controls our players, our players units, right? I'm also going to need a class for our enemy units because they are very similar but but they work differently right so here on the classes i'm going to press the plus icon and i will call this class enemy unit so here i have my enemy unit here i have my unit and as i said they will work very similar but a bit different so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy all my code from the unit and place on my enemy unit and then later we're gonna change some stuff so first let me copy here the start tab uh, we don't have to copy this hashtag thing this is just a comment the code ignores this I can even uh, write stuff by myself like this import will allow me to use the random functions so if I if I didn't have those hashtags there uh, you can see that my game do don't even play, right? Because this is a lot of stuff and they think the Pixelpad thinks it's a line of code, but it's not. So when we have the hashtags, this is just a comment. This is just for us, Pixelpad ignores this and my game can play, right? So we don't need to copy that first line, but all the rest from import until the attack damage, I select everything, hold control, press C. I go to my enemy unit after this hashtag line. I will press control, I mean, I hold control and press V. And I'll do the same on the loop tab of my unit. So I copy everything here, control C, I go to my enemy unit on the loop tab, control V. Now I have a enemy unit that is exactly the same as my unit, but we're going to change some stuff. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my game class. And after all this code here, I will create one enemy unit inside my game on the position of my enemy castle just so we can test how this unit is working, right? So here I can say, for example, that enemy bat is a enemy unit and this enemy bat has a sprite that is a new sprite from the class uh, from the image bat.png. So now when we start the game, we already have a bat. And as you can see, it is acting like a regular unit, right? It's trying to go to the position of the bridge and then later go to the position of the enemy castle. All right, so let's change here. First, I want to make this bat to spawn on the enemy castle's position, on the, on the enemy base position. So I can say that my enemy bat dot x is going to be game dot enemy base dot x and enemy bat dot y is going to be game dot enemy base dot y. Now my bat is spawning on top of my player of my enemy base, but it is disappearing right instantly. So that's what we want to change, right? The enemy is not going to disappear once it touches the enemy base. It's going to disappear whenever it touches the player base. So let's go inside the enemy unit here. And the enemy unit will have a start tab very similar, right? We have the scale X. Well, let's see if we need to change the scale X actually, because I'm not sure. Uh, let me see my bat here. My bat is already looking to the left. So we don't have to make my bat to look to the right because my bat's going to walk to the left, right? So here on the enemy unit, we don't need this scale X equals minus one. My bat doesn't need to be turned to the other side, right? 
it would then choose a bridge to go and set its own uh, attribute, speed and attack damage. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to the loop tab and here, what we have here on the third line here is, this line is making my, my unit to walk to the right. But this is the enemy unit. This should not walk to the right, it should walk to the left. So I'm gonna change this plus to minus. Whenever I change this plus to minus, that's it. It's gonna walk to the left now. Okay, let's see what else. Let's change this collision here because I'm checking collisions between myself and a castle. And then I get which castle have I collided with. And then I check if this castle's team is... So here I want to check for the castle team player to then deal damage to that castle and destroy myself, right? And now, whenever we press play, the bat leaves from the castle, from the enemy castle, and it just walks to the left, right? But it's not crossing the bridge because of this statement here. This statement is checking if my X position is greater than the target X. So it's it's checking if I'm on the right side. But if I want to cross this bridge, I have to be in the left side. So I have to check if it's smaller than that position. So here I'm gonna change this arrow here to be the other arrow. This is the smaller arrow. So I'm checking if my X is smaller than the target X. But then this plus 150 here will kind of bug as well because then my player will change the position here at the end of the bridge. And I don't want that. I want it to be at the end of the other side of the bridge, right? So in instead of minus uh, plus 150, I'm going to do minus 150. And now whenever I press play, my bat goes there, crosses the bridge and go towards the enemy, the player castle. And I'm pretty sure it's already dealing damage, but just so we can test, I'm gonna go to my start tab here and I'm gonna increase the attack damage to 50 instead of one. So it should take half of my castle uh, as damage. Let's see if that happens. So the bat goes there. Yep, so my castle is also losing life and my enemy unit is already dealing damage to my castle. So I'm gonna put this value back to one. And okay, we have started our enemy unit. That's good, it's already behaving the way we want, but I don't want it to be spawned whenever I press play. I want the enemy castle to decide whenever it's gonna spawn a bat or not, right? So I'm gonna go back here on my game class and I'm gonna remove all this code here that I used to create my bat, my enemy bat, right? Delete from there. So that's how it's gonna work. We're gonna need a timer for our enemy castle to be able to spawn troops for us. So let's say I spawn a bat and then one second later I spawn another bat and then one second later I spawn another bat. So these one seconds are counted with timers. So we need timers for this. So to create a timer, I need a variable for that. So I can say here that bat timer is equals. So if I want one second, I cannot use one here. Why not? Well, you will understand why. So wait, let me just leave one for now because we need to keep reducing this timer, right? And to keep reducing this timer, we need to go to the loop tab. If we're gonna access this bad timer from the loop tab, we need to make this bad timer a global variable, right? So I need to add the game dot before the bad timer. Now I can use this variable on the loop tab. Here on the loop tab, I want to keep reducing the bad timer, right? Because that's a timer and the timer keeps going down. So here I can say that game.bat timer is gonna be game.bat timer minus one. So whatever my timer was before, now it will be the timer minus one. So here's the problem. The loop tab runs 60 times per second. So that means that this code here will run 60 times in one second. So if I want the bat timer to last for one second, I cannot use one here. I have to use 60 because this code here will run 60 times in one second. So my bat timer is 60, so then it will be 59 and then it will be 58. And then one second later, it will be zero. 
and when this bet timer is zero, we want to spawn a bet, right? So here, if the game dot bet timer is equals equals zero, then what I want to do, I want to spawn a bet, right? And to spawn the bet is basically the same code as we had here before. So we're gonna say that the bet enemy or enemy bet is a enemy unit and the bet enemy dot x is equals to the uh, game dot enemy base dot x and my bet enemy dot y is equals to my game dot enemy base dot y. Okay, so let's see if that's working. So here we have 60, that means one second. After one second, it will, I mean, it will keep reducing the bad timer, right? And after one second, this bad time should be zero. And if it is zero, then it should spawn an enemy unit for us. So let's try it out. So I press play. After one second, it spawned the bat for us. But the bat doesn't have a sprite. We forgot to add a sprite for the bat. So bat enemy dot sprite is equals a new sprite from the image bat dot png. Right? So I press play. After one second, it spawns a bat. Press play. After one second, it spawns a bat. All right. But if only spawns one bat, it never spawns another bat again. But that's because we have to reset the timer, right? If the timer is over, we reset the timer to start counting again. So here, after I spawn my bat, I want to set my game dot bat timer back to 60. So 60 is one second, right? Let's see if I use uh, 180. So this should be three seconds. So when I, when I press play, the first bat will show up after one second, and then later, every three seconds, it should spawn a new bat for me. So let's see, after one second, it spawned one, and then after three seconds, it spawned another one, after three more seconds, it spawns another one, and that's it. So we have started coding our enemy AI, and we're gonna finish it in the next video. So make sure you press save on your game, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.